behavioral experiments. So if you wanted to understand the effects of your outdoor workout on your brain, here's what I would do. I would take you and all of your outdoor exercising friends and I would give you a whole wide range of tests. I would test your memory, I would test your mood, I would test your focus, I would test your uh, um, creativity, your ability to create things, your uh, asso associative memory, your working memory, all these things. They would have you do your favorite outdoor workout. Mm. And after you cool down, I'd have, and I'd retest you later. And um, uh, in another equal group of outdoor loving people, I would do that before and after just sitting outside or you know, watching a video outside, doing something non-physical outside. And by doing systematic um, experiments that like that, that mm -hmm. have both a manipulation group that as I'm looking at the effects of exercise, but also a control group. So I can see what's the effect of just being outside because that might be, you know, good for your mood as well, or it might improve other, other things. Um, we can systematically try and understand exactly what that workout is doing. And mm -hmm. I, I take that and I take all of the other experiments that people uh, using animal studies are doing where they can actually go in and look at the molecular changes in particular brain areas, mm -hmm. the physiological changes in the body uh, that, that are affecting the brain. And I put those two things together to mm -hmm. try and figure out, I want to know for me, you know, a rat can can also benefit from exercise, but I really want to know for me at my age or for you at your age and your fitness level and your gender, what is that optimum workout that's going to make your brain just just buzz with with uh, <laughs> with good energy and good memory and good focus. And so that that is how I, I address these questions that we're interested in. So I've always wondered why you guys actually use rats mostly to study first, because rats are different to actual human being. Is is that a rats used as sort of like a basis to see, okay, well this might be possible. Yeah. And then then exactly. we'll use that to to move on to humans. Right. Right. So rats are actually really wonderful models for humans. Uh, they have all the brain areas. They have all the uh, same physiological responses. Uh, they, they differ in one interesting way in exercise in that rats love running. Like people <laughs> were like, eh, well, okay. Not. <laughs> but rats, uh, I have a colleague. I, I love when she says this. She says, you know, here's the difference between rats and humans. On their deathbed, you know, they're about to breathe their last breath. All rats would try and crawl to the running wheel and just take a few runs around because they enjoy it so much. Humans are like, forget it. I, just leave me alone. <laughs> I love the bed. I'll yep. just stay here. So, so there are some differences. But, um, but in, in the most important biological, neurobiological uh, basic patterns, they are the same. So they make wonderful, wonderful models, and they have taught us so much about the uh, physiology and underlying neurobiology of exercise that have turned out to be true and, 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 um, and applicable to humans as well. Mm. So when you actually go about studying this, how do you, how do you like actually make it truth or accurate enough mm -hmm. to, to, to basically reveal it to the broader public and say, look, yeah. this is facts. That, that is, uh, that's a great question. So for that, we use um, math and statistics. So <laughs> you can say, okay, I have my friend. He says, working outside is great. He loves it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's, that's an anecdote that might uh, kind of point you towards a direction. But what you want is a good enough uh, group of people that show it in, in, in a quantified way and with a good control group. So it's not just, uh, uh, changes other, other, uh, possible explanations, but, uh, there are, that is the experimental method. You are trying to show a causal relationship between one thing that is brain improvement and another thing, exercise. Mm. And so, um, what, what determines whether we, um, we can publish this and, and say, hey, this is definitely something that, that is happening, um, is determined by 
statistics and mm -hmm. the design of our experiment. Mm -hmm. Now, no experiment is perfect. So you might think you have a perfect experiment and others might come in and look at a different angle and do it in different ways. And, and that's what's hard about science. You know, it, it doesn't go from one experiment to, oh, it's in the science book, so therefore it's true. There's so many things that have been uh, uh, discovered and then found to be true, untrue, and then you have to re rediscover it. That is the um, that is the purpose of science, and and really, as a scientist, you learn how to question everything. So, in fact, nothing is a fact. It's yeah. it, it it has a lot of evidence in support of it right now, but you never know whether something could come and upend our understanding of something, and and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for chinks in the armor. We're looking for things that could be another explanation. Maybe it's not what we really think. And that's why it takes so long to become a scientist. It, 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 it's really a lot of practice, a lot of thinking, rethinking, mistakes, redoing, and uh, uh, learning this scientific method.